You show compassion to everyone. Not even just people in the church, but to everyone. And also to each other. If we're listening to each other, we're seeing that somebody's struggling and we're reaching out to them. We're not being afraid to do it. Um, what would that look like? How much we can change the world? How much we can change each other and impact each other's lives? So, my lesson today is titled, A Calling for a Compassionate Life. Amen. Come on. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to talk about compassion because even right now, think about the holiday season. It is crazy. It is hectic. Go to West Farm Malls, people bump into you. This craziness going on, right? It's hard to have compassion and think about other people when you're consumed about your family or even, even yourself. So, I want to work on my compassion and... You know, I think we all need to work on it. It's a busy season, so that's why it's called a calling for a compassionate life. So we're going to open our Bible today. Look at what, uh, what uh, Jesus says about compassion. And um, this has changed my life. I hope it has an impact in your life. Uh, the first scripture is going to be Luke 10, 25, and 37. And that's Eric. Luke 25. I'm sorry, Luke 10, 25 through 37. And this is the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan. In uh, Luke 10, 25, it says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what is written in the law? And he replied, how do you, how do you read it? Uh, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as well. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and, and who was my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, when he fell into the hands of the robbers. They stripped him of his clothes beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to go by down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So, so too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, as he traveled, came where the man, where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave, gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for, him for, an extra, for any extra expense you may have. Which, which of these three do you, do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Uh, I love that parable. Um, it's great, it's great to see. And so from reading this, my first point is, oh, that's, that's the scripture up there. <laughs> the first, first point is compassion. It feels something. Mm -hmm. You have to feel compassion. That, uh, have compassion. Yep. And so uh, I have a nice little quote up there that says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's look at some of these characters in, in this parable. Come on. Uh, when you look at the priest, Priest was known as the whole, probably the holiest man, you know, in the Jewish culture, right? Um, he was walking by, and he seen this man, and he passed by. He didn't do anything, right? He looked like, wow, this guy is supposed to be priest, the holy, the holy. He knows his Bible, because he, you know, he's living it out. He, he's a priest. Nobody above him. Nobody can, uh, you know, he's right there on the gospel. So you know, yes, he, he's in the temple. Only guy that can go in the temple. Um, you know, but he didn't do anything. He didn't feel for this man. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't feel that he needed to help. And we can't make excuses for the for the priests because you know their culture was, you know, they had to be clean. Couldn't be couldn't be ceremonially unclean. So if the body was dead, I mean, if the guy was dead, then you have to do this. The, the clean, cleansing was last a week, mm -hmm. which means it takes away his time from the temple. Mm -hmm. But why does that matter? Right. There's a man on the side of the road right. that's beat up and half dead. Yeah. Uh, he didn't feel anything for this man. He was so concerned about what he had to do mm -hmm. and worried about if he's dead, do I have to do, if I do this, what's going to be the outcome? Yeah. He didn't feel for anything. It didn't matter. He'd rather just go and keep, keep moving. Yeah. Right? Right. And then 
Uh, also for the for the Levi, he was concerned about what he had to do too. Mm -hmm. He ignored them. He didn't help. This man was half dead. That's probably a, a, a rude sight to see. And just to walk by and not want to help. He did not feel the compassion for it. For the dismiss. And so my question is, what are we ignoring? Who are we not helping? Are we having compassion toward people that we know they're struggling and we're not reaching out to them? Um, are we having compassion for each other? We have compassion for the church. We have compassion for teens. We have uh, compassion toward our pre-teens, kid kids' kingdom. Um, yeah. Those those different things. Do we feel it, or are we just walking by and ignoring them? And then uh, when Jesus. Tell us about the Samaritan. Uh, Jews, like we noticed, uh, Jews did not like Samaritans. They seen him as like a mixed race, half human. But yeah. Jesus used this guy, the Samaritan. And it says, if you read in the ESV version, when the, uh, when the Samaritan seen the half being guy, he said he had pity. In other words, he said he had compassion. Yeah. Yeah. He felt for this man. The one that you thought that would not feel, would not help, he seen it and he felt it. Mm. He didn't ignore it. Um, you know, and you know, it's so funny about that. He wasn't even worried about what the Jews thought. It wasn't even in his mind. He was worried about, let me help this guy. I don't care if he's black, white, he's a Jew. He needs help. He felt it. And sometimes we don't feel for people that, that are struggling and in need because we may be busy. You know, we may not feel the same way. But if somebody needs help, we should be able to feel it and be willing to help. Amen. Um, and when, when you look at the word compassion when it comes to the Bible, uh, it's so deep. It, it talks about intestines, yeah. like the gut feeling, the inside. So this Samaritan, he felt it. It was so deep that he had to do something. Yeah. He had to feel it deep down inside. Um, and he was, uh, he was concerned for the well-being of others. He felt it. Yeah. And so uh, use a scripture about Jesus when he shows compassion. You don't have to turn here, but uh, in Luke 7, 11, 15. So uh, this is Luke 7, 11 to 15. And this is when Jesus raises a widow's son. And it says, Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with, with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Amen. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Wow. That's deep. Um, <laughs> Jesus seen the mother crying. And when you see somebody crying and weeping, compassion, you feel your heart goes out to them. Yeah. You know, there's something there. They need your help. And uh, the reason why I read this scripture is like Jesus put himself in a woman's shoes. Yeah. How many of us uh, does that? Because if you think about it, later on, Jesus was going to know that his own mother had to go through that when he yeah. was going to be killed on the cross. Yeah. He was going to be crucified. Yeah. He could put himself. In that situation, and gave him compassion. Yep. This is what my mom's going to do. Amen. My people want to help her. So let me help this lady that's dealing with the death of her only son. Wow. He felt it. Yeah. He felt it because he put himself in her shoes. How many of us do that? Yeah. How many of us put, you know, we may not be able to relate, but put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. Understand what they're going through. We may not understand, yeah, but right. we can all feel it and reach out and, and try to help. And so Jesus is a great example of, of uh, compassion, right. being able to relate and put himself in other people's shoes. Um, and so uh, that leads to point number two. Let's go. Point number two is compassion acts. You can feel it, but what are you doing with it? Are you doing something about it? Um, I found a nice little picture up here. Sorry about that. My wife found it for me. It says, when action meets compassion, Lives change. Amen. That was deep. We can feel, but what, what are we doing? Are we approaching people? Are we going up to them? You know, if you go up to somebody, that can change their life. That can change in that very moment. Yeah. Show them compassion. What if they don't have your life? What if you're the only one? Right? 
And so when we look back at the parable of the priest and the Levite, they didn't do a thing but walk away. Hmm. Even though they seen it. This guy was walking down. And to be honest, he was probably a Jew too. They didn't feel it or do anything for his man because they're so concerned about what they have to do or being ceremonial and clean. Their own concerns. Right? Um, yeah, let's go. But if you look at the Samaritan, he said he had pity. He felt so deeply he had to act. He had to do something. Yeah. He couldn't just stand by and watch. He had to do something. Yeah. He had to help. Because, and then, like I said earlier, it didn't matter to him what this man was. It didn't even cross his mind. How many of us think of that? Listen, I don't care who it is. I'm going to help. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't feel that way, let, let me do something to help. Yeah. You know, let's, let's, let's act on it. Let's yeah. put it in action. Um, and when you put it into action, you think about the Samaritan. He placed this beaten up man on his own donkey. He had to walk. I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't like to walk all the time. I sweat. I'm not trying to walk. I, I want to be on my own donkey. Um, he had to walk. He had to use his own oil and to take care of this man. He had to banish this man. He had to take the time out to do that. He acted. He didn't let what he, he thought about the man or how he's feeling influence what he needed to do. Um, and this is coming from a man that wasn't expected to do anything. Right. He's a Samaritan. Yeah. He's seen as the low of the lowest. Yeah. And look how he acted. Look how he felt. He didn't let any of that get in his no. way. Um, and when you think about the priest and Levi, it's like, these guys, they should have did something. Right? But that's, that could be us. Yeah. We are disciples. We are Christians. But sometimes we don't, we don't do something. Right. right? Are we going out into communities sharing our faith? Are we going to difficult communities where we may not be one? Right. Are we sharing our faith? You know, are we helping each other where we struggle? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, think about, like I said, dealing with racism. Are you walking up to somebody to talk to them? How, yeah. how are you feeling? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, could be, it could be difficult. It could be an inconvenience. That could have been an inconvenience for, for the Samaritan. Sure. Who knows what he right. was doing? He had all that stuff with him. He had his donkey. He could have been going on a journey. Yeah. But he didn't let that influence him. He acted. He had compassion. He felt it. And he needed to do something. Amen. Um, but what if the Samaritan thought it was inconvenience? Mm. Yeah. That man still be on the road and maybe dead. Right. What if we don't do stuff? What if we don't do something? What are we leaving behind? Mm. Who are we not helping? You know, um, and I know that you know somebody's hurting. They should talk about it, but what if they don't and they, they fall away? You know? Yeah, we we should be able to act and help and fill for the people. Yeah. Amen. Now, like I said, to be honest, it's hard for me sometimes. I don't want to be inconvenienced. I don't want to help all the time. I may feel it, but I'm like, ah, I got something to do. You know, ah, um, now it's going to take me time to do this, not to do that. Right now, this. No, that shouldn't be our thought. Sure. Are, are we helping others to make sure that they're living up to the standard that God has for them? Yeah. Are we being the Amen. light to the world? Amen. Um, so we should act on each other's needs. That's right. By talking and helping like the Samaritan. Yes. The Samaritan man wasn't supposed to be the one that helped in the story. But look what he did. He changed his man's life. He healed him, even though uh, the Levite and the priest walked by. Come on, Eric. Another thing, he didn't make excuses. He could have made excuses. He had stuff to do. Yeah. But he didn't. He just jumped in to help. I don't always jump in to help. Right. Do you always jump in to help when, when it's time to help? Or do you fade in the background? Right. Yeah. That's a good question for you guys. Do you want to help? Do you see the need and don't help? Or do you see the need and jump in? You can't be the same people all the time. Yeah. Right? Sure. It has to be as a collective group. We see the need and we divide it up and we help and we have right. a passion right. for everyone. Yeah. Not just for certain people. Right. So, like I said, what are we ignoring? Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Are we going to be the priest and the Levite? Or are we going to be the Samaritan man that feels yeah. it and acts upon it? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Mark 1, 40 and 42. Come on, And 
this is about Jesus again, and we're going to see how Jesus showed compassion. In Mark 1, 40 through 42, uh, is a man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Um, Jesus felt compassion for this man. Why? Think people with leprosy back, back then, they were like outcasts. Nobody wanted to touch them because they were very contagious. Yeah. They were off to themselves. Mm -hmm. Just imagine this man. He probably hadn't had any physical contact or touch with a human in who knows how long. Right? Yeah. Jesus feel it, feel that he had to touch it. He felt the need to touch this man. Jesus could have said you're healed. Right. Yeah. He did it though. He felt it and he knew he needed to act and do something on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. To touch this man and heal this man. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be honest, I don't know if I would have touched this guy. I would have felt it, but do I need to touch him? God, do I need to touch this man? What, what if I get this? Mm -hmm. But Jesus did not think that way. He thought totally different. He felt the compassion for this man. He felt the need to help this man. And knowing that he hasn't probably been touched or had his contact in years. Let me go, go an extra mile, extra step right. to help this man out. And so, are we going an extra mile? Are we considering to help wow. even when it hurts or it may affect us? Yeah. We may not get anything from it. Are we going to touch and help others in different areas? Mm. And so... Uh, I'm so grateful for my family group. Uh, Eric and I have been in the family group for a couple months. Uh, I've been going through uh, my struggles with different things, uh, with, like, like I said, racism. It's just so awesome that they reached out to me and said, hey, how are you feeling? Without me even saying anything, that was like, whoa. Yeah. Blew me away. Um, I had Julius I always say, hey, how you feeling when we go out? How are you feeling with that? Whoa. Softened my heart. I had Joe Slipple come up to me. Bro, how you doing with that? I'm like, what? This guy's coming out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it felt good. Yeah. I was hurting. I was feeling it. Yeah. You know, I wanted to yeah. not, not even come. My heart was heavy. But my family group, which is the Ghanas, the Jacks, and the Foolers, they reached out. They talked to me. They were willing to talk. They didn't ignore it. They weren't scared. They, see that they seen my need. And they jumped, they jumped at it. Judas jumped at it. See how I'm doing. Joe. So brothers and sisters, are we doing the same thing for each other? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be about raising this. It can be about anything that we're struggling. If yeah. you know, That's right. are you asking those those questions that may be difficult, that may be hard, maybe yeah. hard to talk about, maybe inconvenience? Are we doing those things? Yeah. Because I can tell you it impacted my life. And honestly, yeah. that's why I'm up here today and doing this about my passion because my brother and sisters to show me compassion. Amen. 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 And so, uh, thank you for my family group. Thank you for the Slippers. Thank you for uh, Julius and Heather for uh, talking to me and being worth Being not, not afraid to share and talk to me. Yep. So, Amen. let's go. When action meets compassion, lives change. My life has changed. Amen. So, point three let's is go. compassion illustrates our relationship with God. Jesus was filled with compassion because of the time he had with God and living by God's standard to move. Um, if you go back to, uh, to Mark 135, and this is before he heals the leper. In Mark 135, it's titled, Jesus Prays in a Solitary Place. Yeah. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Amen. And then we uh, see, in, uh, if you turn to Matthew 14, 13. Let's go. In Matthew 14, 13 through 14, this is when Jesus feeds the 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large group, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. It's so amazing. Before Jesus showed compassion, he had time by himself with God. 
Yeah. Um, and it's amazing, especially in, in this one, in Matthew 14, 13, he just dealt with the death of a cousin, John the Baptist. Yeah. You know, uh, his heart is heavy. Um, he's dealing with death. You know, when I deal with the situation with my dad, I don't want to help. I don't feel compassion for anybody. What about me? Mm -hmm. I'm worried about my dad. But Jesus, seeing the crowd, even though he's dealing with he's dealing with, he prayed and he seen the crowd and he was willing to help and heal their sick, even though the cousin, his cousin just died. Yeah. He had it. Um, that's what shows his relationship with God. He had he prayed for us before he could show compassion to others. He had yeah. his time. So brothers and sisters, how is our relationship with God? Is that reflected through our compassion? Yeah. Are, we, are we doing what we need to do so that we can show compassion to others? Amen. Um, it may be hard. It's like Jesus, it may be hard to show compassion after your cousin was just behaving. Mm. Or are you willing to do it? Are you willing to go off and pray and have your time so mm. you can be able to help others? Mm. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, it's hard for me. Like I said, it's, it's a struggle. But is that, is that going to influence me? I've got to have my time with God yeah, no. to be able to show compassion. Um, and so the priests, the Levite, they didn't even, you know, they, they're the high, high officials, but this, they're just playing the church. They're not really living it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is their relationship with God? Are they just reading the Torah and going by what they say? Are they really living it out? Are they showing love to everyone and not worrying about their own situation? Mm -hmm. So are we doing the same? Are we like the Levite and the priest? Are we just going about our day? Are not feeling compassion for others? Are we not in our Bibles to see what compassion is? Are we not trying to live like Jesus and show compassion? Mm -hmm. Or are we like trying to strive to be like Jesus? Yeah. Be excellent like Jesus and in our compassion. Um, like I said, Jesus had to show compassion. Before he showed compassion, he had to have time with God. That's right. Um, and that time with God is crucial. Um, when we spend time with, with, also I want to ask you, when we spend time with God, do we pray to see the needs for others? Mm -hmm. Or are we just uh, praying for ourselves. Um, are we trying to say, God, help me to show, to see their needs so I can show compassion and be willing to help. Uh, sometimes I can just pray for myself because I'm so concerned about what I have, I have to do, how I'm feeling. But are we praying for each other? Are we reaching out to each other and seeing the needs of, of each other? Mm. And so, it's funny, when I look at the, uh, the Good Samaritan, when I look at this, it's funny because uh, most of us can think, you know, who we are in the in, the, uh, in that good Samaritan parable, but I see myself as the beat up man, <clears throat> and I see Jesus as the good Samaritan, mm -hmm. and I see life and different things as the Levite and the priest. I thought I could rely on those things, but guess what? I got beat up. The world chewed me out and spit me out, <laughs> right. and things left me by the side of the yeah. road. <laughs> right. And Jesus came. He said, "Eric, get up. I got you. I'll take care of you. Yeah. I'll make sure that you are okay." Uh, listen, I'm not worried about who you are or what you have done, but I will take care of you. Amen. And then when he, when he pays the end, the Samaritan is just like Jesus paying his life on the cross. Amen. That was the cost. Amen. I'm willing to go the extra mile. Amen. Um, because to be honest with you guys, my life is beat up and ugly like the, the Samaritan, like the guy was on the side of the road. Yeah. I wasn't doing what I needed to do. You know, I was lying, I was drinking, I was doing so many crazy things. <coughs> That was going to fulfill me. Yeah. End of the day, it left me empty. Yeah. Only thing that could come and save me from the side of the road wasn't life, music, sports. I love football. That wasn't going to save me. It kept me. What saved me was mm. my relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 So, my relationship with God has helped me with my compassion. Helped me with what I needed to do. And so, just realize that Jesus cleans us up. Yeah. And that He takes care of us. Because we all have a story. We're all on the side of the road. We're all that right. guy. Yeah. 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 Right? Um, yeah. We may think that things can save us. But those things don't come to save us. Amen. Jesus Christ saves us. That's right. He shows us compassion. He loves us. And he takes care of us. Even when nobody else will do it. Mm -hmm. He'll pay. He already paid the cost. Mm -hmm. He's going up on that cross for us. Amen. Bearing our sins. And so that's why I love the Good Samaritan. He's showing compassion. Even yeah. when it's not easy. Yeah. Just being willing to... To feel for someone, to act, and see our illustration, um, to see our relationship with God. And so I would encourage you today to try and look for the needs of others. Show compassion. Amen. Love each other. Amen. Reach out to each other. Uh, what are you doing? 
Are you willing? We had that Kids Kingdom video. Did you feel that? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. But now do something about it. Are you willing to do something? Right? Um, you know, is, is it easy? No. But guess what? You see the, the fruit of helping out with these young kids. Have my preteens back there. They're awesome. Yeah. You know, I love being with them. So just willing to help and willing to, to be able to help people. That's right. Are you willing to help the teens? Jesus and Heather have a lot going on. Right? Are you feeling that? Come on. Are you going to help? Are you going to do something? Do you feel that compassion so deeply that you have to do something? Not staying on the sideline and making excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody says, I feel some certain type of way because I feel like, you know, somebody says, hey, are you going to talk or ignore it because you think that's not true? Right. What are you going to do? Somebody turn it because they might have lost a loved one. Are you, are you saying, oh, what do y'all do? Or are you saying, how do you feel? <clears throat> are you reaching out? Are you showing compassion? Wow. And so this is challenging to me because I have to always show compassion. Yep. You know, I have to show compassion when I was at work with youth that shot people. Sex offenders, am I showing the compassion and loving them so I can be an example of God? Yeah. My wife is in a prison. I don't want her to show compassion because I don't want her to beat her because I'm really scared. But <laughs> she has to do it. Show compassion for these yeah. guys. Are we all doing the same thing? For people who think that they need compassion, they need compassion. That's right. So are we showing them? So thank you for letting me share today. Yeah. Yeah. I pray that we all show compassion. Yeah. Yeah.